Hi, and welcome to a new episode of Don't Be a Man About It podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Today, my guest is someone very special who is not only a dear friend, but also someone who I, I really admire of what he does, where he came from, and his story that is, I, I do believe it, and it could inspire the world. Today, I speak to Hamad, Hamad Asad. Hi. Ahlan. Thank you so much for, uh, for, for coming today. Um, I know you had a very busy week. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for having me and thank you for a very generous and kind introduction. Um, so well, yeah. I know, um, yeah. Ahmed, I, know, I know your story, but I don't want to do you know, the honor. You do the honor, tell people who is Hamad. Thank you, thank you. Who is Hamad? Hamad is um, an, on, a, a being, an emotional being who is constantly for the um, looking out for improving himself and improving the life around him and every um, other emotional being that I come across. Um, I keep myself teachable. I love um, trying to get to know more about myself and with it I kind of try to um, shift areas in my life that were conditioned based on the way I grew up or the environment that I was raised in. Um, I try to evolve myself out of what life molded me to, be, uh, to become and try to find my authentic self based on the values I created for myself that I stand for right now. And I try to make every single step that I um, do based on these values. So if I could sum it up in a nutshell, a human being that found himself beyond all the life experiences and got to a beautiful place that he wants to reflect that to others. Now that is an introduction. <laughs> How much... Um... <laughs> Before I comment on what you've said, I um, I always ask that to my guests because it's very important to me. How is your heart doing today? As long as it's beating, uh, it's grateful. It's in a very happy place. It's very well maintained, and it's it's doing very well. Yeah, it's doing very well. That's a beautiful question. <laughs> you, I like that. What I loved about your introduction when you were introducing yourself is your choice of words. You were very selective with the word and it shows that you were focusing on the words that reflect authenticity, uh, well-being, uh, values, uh, and you never assured something. For example, you were, you're, you're always trying to do your best. You're always trying to find yourself. And I love that. Even though I know and people know that you have reached, if I don't want to say hundreds, millions of people with your story, with your mission, with your uh, company, the Nourishers. So why do you keep refle not reflecting, giving that image, you know, I'm trying, I'm still trying. And you also said, I'm learning, uh, I'm open to learn. So that is a value or that is something that not every person has. They always come off as know it all. And you don't have that. Uh, so I wore a lot of hats, Annie, I would say that. I, I started off as, uh, I worked in tele telecommunication, banking, uh, PR, marketing. Um, the last job I was in was a, um, I was a former police officer. And in each field that I worked in, I tried my level best and I did well. So who am I when it comes to being the banker? I've, I've done my best and I could have progressed in that field, right? Mm -hmm. So who am I right now if I'm going to take a step back and see myself as Hamad the banker, Hamad the PR, Hamad the marketeer, and eventually 
this is just skills, you know, and this is where, where, where people kind of um, relate or associate themselves to what they're doing and not what they are being as a being, right? Okay. And this is why I kind of always reflect on myself as a being first. And I know that anything that I put my, my effort in will become better. So I'm not associating myself, my values to what skill set I have. And, and this is why I keep trying my level best to educate myself, to learn. Um, in my first, first podcast ever, sharing my story, um, I said something that I meant every word in it, which is whoever thought they knew me, give me a chance to know they knew me. Because uh, I know for a fact that I might, I might have been someone that was very naive, that was maybe um, hurtful. I know there were parts of my life that maybe I hurt people. I might be, I, I might have done something silly. I know that I've been through phases in life. And that's why I say, forgive me and give me a chance to know the new me. Because I know that I am in a good place right now that I want to reflect this as who Hamad is, not who Hamad was. That's beautiful. And uh, you made a very good point. Uh, these days, when we ask people, who are you? What do you do? They automatically introduce themselves as by what they do. Like, yes, I'm a banker. Yes, I'm a, I work in this company. Yes, I work in this company. But who are you? Uh, one of the most difficult questions when, I, when I'm working with my clients, Hamad, when I ask them to, to, to list their five top, top five positive traits, what are your top positive traits? It would take them hours. Sometimes it takes them days. Uh, I never thought about it. Uh, and the other point that you really made, I really loved is, don't judge me based on who I was. Give me a chance to introduce you to who I am today because I can resonate with what you, what you have just said. I was a very hurtful person <laughs> and not because I was a bad person. It's just that that's how I knew things would work. I thought that the, the, the higher or the louder you yell, the stronger character you have. I thought that by getting into an argument with someone and telling them really hurt, hurtful words, which means I, I'm taking my right, I thought that, I thought a lot of things. And then when I realized, oh, that is, that's not how things go. That's when I, I, I took the decision to, you know, ask for forgiveness and work on myself internally so it doesn't reflect in a bad way externally. Uh, so thank you so much for pointing out th these points and you're talking and talking and talking and I have a lot of questions, but the most loud, the loudest question in my head is, so Hamad, as an ex-police officer, have you ever went through mental health issues as a police officer? But because we know that in our culture or in our society, police officers are supposed to be tough, are supposed to be strong or you know the police officer so what were your main struggles as a police officer when it came to your mental health? um okay um in my in my case um the program that i joined as a police officer was the idea of having officers working in embassies out of bahrain so bahrain embassies around the world they were supposed to have us so that was one of the only reasons why I joined. I was doing very well in the, back, in the banking sector. And the job that I had before joining the, um, um, the ministry was as a junior manager. And you're talking about when I leaving that and joining as an officer, trust me, I started as a cadet. So that was like starting from scratch, starting um, forgetting up everything that I have from experience, knowledge, wherever I am. So ev even my um, the private sector experience doesn't 
kind of help me being here like it's not gonna give me like a, a higher rank or they, i'm not gonna get any kind of um extra pay so that was something so a standard of living straight away drops down um you're talking about i was paid as a cadet one fourth of what i was getting paid one fourth so that itself why did i do that because i've always wanted um to leave um i'm i'm a, i'm big on human human potential and when i got this opportunity i wanted to see how far i could go and based on my capabilities as a human being right so that itself would have opened doors being a diplomat um being an officer being in in in, a, in an environment so new to me um so i i put in so much um effort so much work um to prove myself I've, uh, i was always the first in my um the pro uh, the training sessions that we had um i made sure that um i kind of cultivated and mindset that you know what i know i'm going so i kept my space from people i didn't want anything at anyone attaching uh, i didn't want to attach myself to anyone so i pushed away everyone because i had this mentality of me leaving right um this is when things were so clear to me yeah and i was putting 120 to 150 um working day and night there were days that i was working on weekends um at this point in my life i was training very well i was eating very well sleep i've always had problems sleeping ever since i was i was a kid um and we'll go to that later maybe um so what made sense to me that since i'm eating well and training well خلاص this this is what my um view on health was يعني so sleep wasn't something that's really important to me but as long as i'm eating well i'm training well i'm doing well okay so the whole program was supposed to be within let's say a year a two years um until i, I was supposed to go and it didn't happen after 3 years um of constantly going grinding 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 and trying to prove myself just to make sure that خلاص like no matter what happens i will go um out of nowhere they told me hamad uh, the program is sh- uh, is shut off so this is a reality you know like when how what happens um in your mind you're living some sort of a reality which is true to you and then some external reality hits you and that to me created a trauma you know and i couldn't believe it that i didn't take any days off literally i didn't take any day off and at that point in my life خلاص it got me to wait um you've tried so hard to leave bahrain it didn't work out when i i wanted to study even though i had three scholarships uh, my parents didn't want me to leave so that been taken away so i i wanted to get my certification and leave and once that happened that was before getting the job in the ministry um this job presented itself so i got to join them and fasting fast forward 3 years i'm still here in my mind i was just li- not lying i was on autopilot knowing that i was i was going towards my goal and then after 3 years you know this this uh, wave of truth hits me telling me that hamad you're not going here i i had my first um deep shake um in reality where i kind of realized you know what what am i doing to myself first of all why am i really trying so hard to leave bahrain and then um again here still i didn't understand mental health I, no one around me ever pointed out that this is how it feels you feel lost you feel confused you, you feel like you your you, your sense of identity is lost you all these matters no one kind of 
made me realize in that this might be things that are related to a mental health um, issue that I might be facing. And eventually this led to a point where I was like, you know what, I was at my lowest. Um, I've, I've joined this place for a better opportunity, yet I lost the opportunity I had. Now, right now, I am starting from scratch. You know, like all these came in um, hitting so hard. And that's when I was like, you know what? I need a break. I sincerely need a breather right now, away from family, away from friends, away from trying to run behind something and just be, you know, that's, that's why I'm just saying that I just wanted to be and give Hamad a space to have a breather. So I take uh, three months um, leave and I took my first um, ticket to the States, which is where I wanted to go. Initially, I wanted to move to the States. Why? I don't know. Uh, maybe the whole um, idea of like the land of the uh, land of um, um, dreams or whatever you want to call it. So I wanted to go to the place that I thought will fulfill my voids. So I just traveled there and decided on drifting, meeting people, no plans, just trying to understand who Hamid is at this given time in life. What is it that I want? What is it that I stand for? And eventually try to hear my intuition and what is it trying to teach me or what is trying to tell me, you know, get some sort of guidance. At that point, I kind of started reading more about mental health. I started realizing, you know what, Hamad, you've been through a lot of lows in your life. And Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, I, were, I was able to find a way to help myself. But the, the problem is, and this is why I always say, accept help, try to find ways to, um, to help heal because what I've been doing, I was putting all the plasters all over my wounds, right? All these wounds, I was trying to just put some kind of bandage on just to let me move a little bit further. In 2013, that's when I decided, you know what? I converted that self-discovery into a healing journey where I kind of came face to face with all these fears, all these um, doubt that I have, I started reflecting inwardly to understand who am I, what do I want to out of life, and start understanding where am I going. So that, my, that itself made, made things so much clearer. I knew that I was going through a mental health challenge. I, was, I knew that I was living in a toxic, I mean, working in a toxic environment. And I knew that there was a lot of um, things that are harming me that I didn't even know that it was contributing into the mental health cha challenges that I was facing. You know, since you don't know the symptoms, you would never understand what's, uh, what's going on. And that came all together. And that got me to, as I said earlier, the self-discovery, self-hearing journey and I never looked back, you know, I was, this is where I kept on trying to work through it to get to the point where I am today. I'm anchored, I feel more content, and I understand that life hits you hard just because uh, we weren't ready or we weren't aware or we weren't awoken, uh, awaken at that given point. Life tried to give you some sort of indications um, try to show you some sort of signs, but because we're so consumed with um, doing that we forget that we are, be we are only beings, right? And that's, where, that's why I didn't know all this stuff. And it's just, it's just that if we take a break and check, on, check in onto ourselves every now and then, we will understand, you know, like I'm hurting in this sense. I'm, and I'm actually, um, I'm feeling uncomfortable. You know, what is this trying to tell me? And once you do that, you know, like 
every cut could be healed if we tr we actually give it the proper attention. And that's why I'm saying like, stop wrapping yourself with bandages and try to give yourself a chance to heal so that you overcome this wound. So yeah, I know that, uh, I hope this answers your question uh, when it comes to the challenges, but I don't like saying that my mental health challenge just came from the work that I was working. You know, I grew up, there's a lot of stuff that has been going that I wish I knew or I made, uh, I understood, I understood what they were so that I'll be able to deal with them better. And Hamad, during that journey, as challenging as it may be, of course it was very challenging. Were you supported? Were you well surrounded? I had a very loving family. My parents loved me to death. They gave me everything. The only thing is they showed their love and uh, compassion by giving uh, materialistic stuff. Um, still, we don't come up, uh, we don't come from a family there where um, um, love is expressed verbally or uh, physically by touching and hugging and all that. Um, no one around me ever um, defined what is mental health. Nobody ever spoke about it. So being like, ever since I grew up, I didn't even know it existed. The only idea we had of uh, mental health challenges is someone that was crazy, you know? And even back then it was called, that was labeled as retarded, you know? And I'm glad that they kind of shifted to mental health challenges or illnesses so that they understand that there is a healing process or they, there, there's a way to cure it um, instead of just labeling as a retard or crazy or all that. And that's why we don't take that step because the first thing we kind of associate um, of, of um, this kind of uncomfortable feeling to retardation or craziness, right? And we don't want to be called crazy or retarded. So no, to answer your question, no. Um, so how did you get through it, Ahmad? Okay, so... Coming up, my growing up, um, I've always um, been surrounding myself with a lot of people. I've always surrounded myself with a lot of people. I am a people's person and I derived my happiness by making others happy. So one of the things that I've- I'm sorry here, but that's, I, I really don't wanna to forget to ask about that. So when you say I surrounded myself with a lot of people, what kind of people? Because sometimes it can be two ways. Um, so were you surrounding yourself with people who are there just to distract you with something fun or people who would you have discussions with and tell them, hey, listen, I'm not okay. What kind of people? Yeah, distracting them. Yeah. Distracting and uh, of, um, yeah, any, I don't remember like, uh, and this came, um, this, uh, as you mentioned, um, I came to a conclusion that I know no like people. I I hanged out with a lot of groups and a lot of people, right? I I'm sure no one knows me um, deeply. They don't understand. Like they know the I they have an idea of who Hamid is, and I don't think I ever gave a chance to, to let people in. I grew up always bottling up my emotions. Um, and eventually, as you said, like, I've, so I, I kept everything to myself. I, what made me feel good is giving and doing for others. So my sense of value was on how much I do and how much I make people feel. Um, so that's something that's always been, all, been there. Um, I had, I had very strong asthma as a kid um, that kind of stopped me from being like normal kids. So these autoimmune diseases actually um, 
limited me as a kid, right? So I've always tried to play and move and the, the ability of being active cured me. That got me to the point that health and well-being was always associated with if I wanted to feel good, you know? So that for me stuck in the back of my head. If I'm feeling a certain way, move, be active, try to eat better, you know? So I've always had that in the back of my head. It's like, it was part of my toolkit. So going back to your point, uh, when it came to family, um, we're not the people, that, we're not kind of the kind of people that share. When it comes to friends and family, I've always been the person like that people leaned on and I wasn't, I didn't have that someone for me to lean on. Um, but whenever I felt I needed to feel better, I did sports, you know? So that's maybe like one of the main things that made me feel, feel a, little bit, a little bit better. And one of my horror, like, let's say one of my, um, one of the, let's say low points in life was when I got my scholarship and I was like, خلاص, I was like on the process of leaving. Um, my dad out of nowhere came in and he's like, you know what, you're not leaving, you're staying here. And he used something that I sincerely wanted to leave because of this reason, which is Wasta, like knowing people and um, having being between your friends and family and getting what you want because you're surrounded with your friends and family. So he told me like, why do you want to leave since you're here with your family and your friends, you have everything that you want. It's like, no, I wanted to be me. I wanted to be independent. I wanted to see how, how much my potential would let and you lead me and where would I reach in life, right? So this is what I want. I wanted my own identity. I don't want, yeah, because of this person, I was able to get this job and now I am a CEO or, or like I'm a manager or I'm, a, I'm this and that. I don't want, I didn't want these fake labels. I wanted to make sure because of my sweat, tears, and basically the effort that I put into something, I wanted to reach somewhere in my, in my life based on my own capabilities and, and, um, and the effort that I put into it. So at that point, I got really devastated because that I had so much expectations, so much expectations of leaving. And then may, the minute I knew that I'm not leaving, I did the same um, uh, coping mechanism that I had when it came to distracting myself with people. But this time, instead of people, I started working. So, and that's why I'm telling you, I've, I kept on, I changed almost 14 different jobs, but in the process of developing, I got to, yeah, I always try to find a better pay, better company, better salary. Um, so that's how I kind of kept myself from feeling. And at that point, I gained so much weight. It was ridiculous. Um, I neglected myself totally. I am not a man. And I do believe that all humans go through depression, go through loneliness, go through um, anxiety attacks, they grieve, they mourn, but each in their own way. But now as I listen to you speaking about your struggles and your journey and how you were kind of, I don't wanna say in the wrong place, but it's, it, it felt while listening to you, no matter what you do, you were always being pulled back and that caused loneliness, depression, feeling limitless, um, limited, sorry. So how does it feel as a man? And I always try to clarify is that when I say as a man, it's just because of the fact that you just mentioned that your coping mechanism was distracting yourself of avoiding to feel, of not talking to anyone about what's going on. Do you think now, Hamad, the nourisher, 
uh, the, the well-being advocate, um, all of that, do you think that back then, if you knew, would you have done things differently? Definitely, definitely, definitely. I wish someone came in and was asking, asked me genuinely, how are you feeling? You know, I wish my parents didn't like my any, I love my uh, my parents to death again. I wish the only thing is they showed more affection and and um, compassion towards towards us, you know, instead of like, oh, you did very well, congratulations, here's a here's a bike or here's money or here's this and that. Yani, a hug would have done yani, uh, so much more. Um, um, if if I had more knowledge about the symptoms that I was facing, at least I would have dealt with it in a better way. You know, I wish someone gave me a better direction. At least I, I wouldn't wait for 30 years of, you know, like going through pain to realize that I could have healed earlier, you know, or dealt with it in a better way. Yeah, for me, I had to go through go through it the hard way, try things in, in, um, that made sense to me just to keep on moving forward. So my survival mechanism was trying to, at first, just distract myself so that خلاص, I, I kind of live my life without having to face things. I could have just understood like, okay, um, if I had some, any, some sort of hell back then, it could have made me realize, you know what? I, I could have dealt with that and still dealt with myself and grew from that place. Yani, in, in, in simpler words, I would say like, instead of focusing on that and ignoring it, and I know in the back of my head, it would have been, yeah, it's eating my head, like I'm eating my thoughts and generating a lot of negativity. It could have been dealt in a beautiful way, in a beautiful manner. And I could have taken things from a place of love, from a place of kindness. And step by step, I understand that, you know what? These hardship is meant to build me up, make me realize there is more to life than maybe the bubble I was living in. Um, you know, like you learn a lot of stuff. There's wisdom in every challenge. But we, because we're conditioned in a way that, you know, like we've been nurtured in a, in a very loving environment that we don't get to maybe to experience um, things in a certain way. We don't understand the underlining of um, stuff that come face to face within um that that might challenge you so what we do is we try to avoid these certain events or we avoid our emotion or we, uh, we avoid our thoughts because i know nobody nobody wants to be uncomfortable you know like nobody wants to be uncomfortable but if we understand that if we sit in this uncertainty or these uncomfortable uncomfortable no moments there is always wisdom within them. There is, that's where healing comes, comes from. And I wish I was given the chance to, to experience the pain and grow from the pain instead of trying to avoid it and just keep on running away from it. And why is that? It's because most of the stuff, like most of us, and I'm sure a lot of people could relate this, because it becomes that because you're a man, take it as it is. Because of a man, take a punch. Because you're a man, try not to be very emotional about this. Because you're a man, you need to, um, yeah, you need to be able to withstand all these pain and don't show any kind of weaknesses. So yeah, yeah, that. Um... And you no, know, I'm never speechless, Hamid. I'm never speechless usually. Thank you so much for sharing this. I am I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure a lot of men will resonate 
to at least more, most of the things, if not the experience itself, most of the feelings and the emotions or thoughts that you went through in your journey, whether it was the uh, self-discovery or self-healing or the painful one, a lot of men would resonate with it because, you know, you work in, 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 in the same industry and you know how many men they are split into two types. One who are aware of what's going on, but they don't want to do anything about it because they're scared of their comfort zones, because of their, they're scared of the pain to be too much to handle or scared of them. What would people say? And the second type of men who are not even aware that there's something wrong and they truly genuinely believe, no, 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 this is me and this is the right thing. And I have been doing this for the rest of my life. As Hamad, what would you give advice for both of these types? The, one who, the ones who are aware, but not taking any action, and the type who are not aware, but they have to take action as well. Uh, first of all, I would say if you're hurting and you're going through a hard time and you're not doing, about, you don't, you're not doing anything about it, eventually that energy lost in that process. So I loved um, something that I saw yesterday. Um, losing weight is hard and being overweight is hard. Choose your heart. And this is exactly right. what, I mean, I mean, what defines this right now. Because if you're not comfortable where you are right now, do something about it. Because if you don't do something about it, you chose to keep it as it is. And eventually, um, this goes to the, um, okay, just um, to, to rephrase one thing. So I kind of class, uh, uh, classify them into three categories. So we have the unaware that you mentioned that they are going through a lot of pain, a lot of suffering, but because their environment made it seem okay, so they're not aware of it. You have the uncertain. There are people that they know something's going on, but they're not, they're, they're not certain of how they could deal with it. And then you have the conscious who's, he knows exactly what to do. And this is the people that really going and take the step to ask for help. Um, for the people that are not aware, this is my obligation here to create this, um, to create the awareness to speak up. And that's why you get to see I'm putting so much content and I put my heart out there to make sure I want people to feel at least some what of what I'm feeling right now in the sense that I had to endure the pain and be in a good place right now in life and willingly able to develop and um, train myself and do stuff and and become better because I've paid my dues and I've been able to um, put in the work right so that's why I put a lot of content in re in regarding for the unaware people. When it comes to the uncertain, if you're not feeling comfortable, ask, just ask the people around you, like, I'm feeling this way. Do you think there is something that I could do? You know, curiosity always might lead you to, to the right way. Um, it might, first of all, might lead you to the wrong people, but you know, like, um, Try to seek help from the right people when it comes to any challenges that you're facing. You know, there's no shame about it. There's no, um, there's no one, nobody would label you. And every time we say that, okay, people might think and my, people might, th uh, might um, have this sort of idea. Tara, we realize, Danny, and we've done a little bit of um, surveys and regarding these matters. There's a lot of people that don't even give a damn about you, you know, like Annie and eventually those, we those types of people and I cannot wrap my head around them. I cannot like my friends. I have a couple of friends, Hamad, speaking of that, they call me you are they call me naive. Yeah, I'm 33 years old and I still get the word naive just because for me, I always try to find excuses until today for every person's uh, not hurtful behavior, but a bad behavior. Maybe he's in a bad mood. Maybe he has a bad day. Maybe he has a trauma who, that is unresolved. Maybe he has something, maybe he needs help. I always try to find excuses. But then 
days pass by and oh my god that person truly doesn't give a shit um i i can't even imagine what are the things that are that goes into their minds i i can't even imagine like how can someone not care about someone else's being or someone else's uh safety and um, I don't get it. I don't get it. No matter how much psychology books I read or documentaries I watch or people I sit with and talk to, I still don't get it. So uh, I don't know. <laughs> they fall under. They fall under the unaware. Remember what I said. The environment. The environment makes it okay for them to act this way. You know, they've been conditioned that this is what normal is for you, right? So the only thing is what, uh, what I was referring, um, referencing, uh, um, reference as a reference or so anyways, Sorry. Uh, referring to is when we keep thinking that others are perceiving us in a certain way mm -hmm. um, or thinking about us in a certain way, it turned out that they don't even see us or think about us or they don't even care about the the idea that we put in our head by ourselves, you know. Um, that's why I'm saying, like Annie, if um, uh, there's a beautiful test that I would I would recommend everybody to do. If you take ten people and you put yourself in front of them and tell each and every one of them what do you think about me, you'll oh, have 10, 10, 10 opinions. You know, I, you'll get ten different opinions, and this. It shows you exactly how people perceive you. Pre people perceive you based on their understanding, their level. And eventually this would give you the comfort of being you, you know? And this is, I think you've, you've, you've heard in, the, in, in our talk, uh, the gentleman, that we touch so much on the authenticity, you know? It's, it's I, I can't stress enough that if we tapped into our authentic, uh, authentic self, it's easier to live. It's easier to be our true self. You, you stop pretending. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so you stop pretending. You, you stop um, trying to please others. You stop um, fitting in other people's boxes. And you start doing things for yourself, <clears throat> which goes to the point if you're not feeling a certain way and you feel uncomfortable, ask yourself, is it me? Is it the environment? Is it the workplace? Is it because the person I was sitting with? Is it because the food I ate? You will find the answer. Ask yourself these questions. And once you find some sort of an answer, try to seek help based on that. If it's something you, know, you ate, maybe you're allergic to it. <clears throat> you might be having some sort of um, allergic reaction that's going on. If it's uh, the person that you, you sat, with, uh, sat down with, is it because they insulted you in some sort of way or made you feel bad in a certain way? You know, like once you get to understand these matters, you, you would understand, okay, right now I am, in, I am more aware. You know, I shift from the uncertainty that I was in. Now I'm aware what can I do about it? You know, like this is when you kind of help these people in the, um, in the uncertain um, category. And then the, that's when they shift into step-by-step step when you, they seek help, they shift into the consciousness. Like this is when they're conscious about, okay, now I understand what I'm going through. Please someone help me, you know? And this is how this um, segregation between these three categories um, kind of um, unfolds is when you create awareness, the unaware people will start learning and this is when they'll get to the uncertain. And once they know that um, there is help out there, this is when they'll be conscious enough to take the decision to accept help. Beautifully said. Hamad, thank you so much. Most welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, one last thing you'd like to share with anyone who's listening right now. I can't uh, 
choose anything better than just be authentically you, unapologetically you, be um, put put in the work to understand yourself first. Forget about everything else. Just take the time to understand yourself understand where you're going, understand what do you stand for as a human being, your virtues, your values. And based on that, cultivate a mindset on every single thing that it's from that point onwards. Because the minute you understand that I am someone that wants to reflect love, empathy, kindness, um, authenticity, every action every behavior would come from that virtue. So, and how do you find that? It's when you tap into your being and understanding your authentic self. So that's, I think I wanna end this with, with this. And one last thing, accept help when you're ready, accept help when you're hurting, accept help from your friends. If you feel like they can't help you, go to professional help and you need to understand you matter and you deserve healing. Amen to that. Amen to that. Thank you again, Hamad. You're most Thank you, welcome. everyone, for tuning in and listening. And don't be a man about it. Speak up. I'll see you soon. <laughs>